Hey there, CJ Math students, and welcome to homework 3.5, Proportions and Ratios. This is a preview homework. It's due tomorrow. So the first is saying, state if each pair of ratios forms a proportion. Remember, uh, this is only true if both ratios are the same. So there's a couple ways we can do this. We could either simplify both ratios and see if they're equal, or we could cross multiply and see if their products are equal. Um, so I want to do the cross multiplying because I, I think it's easier. So first I'll do 16 times 3. When I do 16 times 3, I get 48. And then secondly, I'll do 6 times 4. And when I do 6 times 4, I'll get 24. So do 48 and 24 equal each other with a question mark? The answer is absolutely not, no. The second way you can do it is say, hey, 16 over 6 over 16, if I divide by 2, divide by 2, I'll get 3 over 8. Now it's 3 eighths again equal to three-fourths which is already simplified again the answer is no so those are two different ways you can do it but in both cases we come up with the answer of no uh, number three again I'll do two times twelve which in this case will give me twenty-four and then I'll do three times eight which in this case will also give me twenty-four so again I ask myself the question does twenty-four equal twenty-four the answer is yes again the second way you can do that is saying is three over two the same thing as uh, 12 over 8, which if I simplify it, dividing by 4, I will also get is 3 over 2 equal to 12 divided by 4, 3. 8 divided by 4, 2. So are they equal to? Yes. Yes, they are. So that is why number 3 is proportional, but number 1 was not proportional. I would pause right now and try and do uh, both methods for 2 and 4. Right. Uh, on 5 through 8, all we're doing is solving the proportion. So basically, we're going to do exactly what we did last time, but solve for the missing variable. So p times 2 is 2p, and then 4 times 6 is equal to 24. So now you've set this equation up where you go ahead and just divide both sides by 2. Whatever number is attached to the variable, that's what you divide by. Um, 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 1 times p, or 1 times anything, is that thing. So 1 times p is just p. Um, and 24 divided by 2 is 12. So there's your answer, 12. So now you ask yourself, hey, is 4 over 12 the same thing as 2 over 6? Well, 2 over 6 simplifies to 1 third, and 4 over 12, hey, that also simplifies to 1 third. So yes, you have the proportions. Uh, and this one you'll do 6 times 10, which is 60, and 5 times x, which is 5x. So I always like to write the variable first on the left-hand side. So 5x equals 60. You could easily do 60 equals 5x, it doesn't matter, uh, you'll get the same answer. Um, but here, again, whatever number is attached to the variable, you divide by, so here I'm going to divide by 5. Um, and basically we're saying what number times 5 is equal to 60, so that's also the same thing as 60 divided by 5, that's the same question, right? So when I cross cancel, or sorry, not cross cancel, excuse me, cross those off because 5 divided by 5 is 1, I'm left with x is equal to 60 divided by 5, which again is 12. So B. Um, and again, you can check this by saying, hey, is 5 over 6 the same thing as 10 over 12? Well, 5, 6 is simplified, and 10 and 12, uh, divide them both by 2, I would also get 5, 6. So yes. Again, I would pause on this section right now and try and do 6 and 8 with the similar method that I've done and showing all the work that I've shown. All right, now the remaining problems, basically what you're going to want to make sure you do is answer each question. You can round your answers to the nearest whole number. That's important, right? Um, and remember to write down what you're comparing. So let's start with number nine. It says 12 bags of yellow onions cost $24. How many bags of yellow onions can you buy for $8? So what we're comparing, is we're comparing the amount of bags of onions we can buy uh, and the amount of money. So our first ratio is in the first sentence, 12 to 24. 12 bags to $24, right? equals our second ratio will be in the second sentence here it says how many bags of yellow onions can you buy for eight dollars so notice eight dollars dollars is on bottom so eight should go on bottom and our variable right here uh, is x so all we'll do is say 24 times x which is 24 x equals and then 12 times 8 which is 108 and again, you can use calculators as long as you show this work here. And so, uh, made a mistake, it's not 108, it is 96, my fault. So then 96 divided by 24 uh, is four. So we have to divide both sides by 24. 
and you get your answer of x equals 4. Um, no need to check because we have done a whole bunch of uh, work on this one. All right, so let's look at 11. Carlos was planning to a trip to Jordan. Before going, he decided to do some research, and he learned that the exchange rate is 7 deniers for $10. So deniers are what they use in Jordan for money, um, and obviously dollars are what we use here in the United States. So how many deniers would he get if he exchanged $20? So first of all, what are we comparing? We're comparing deniers and, sorry, deniers and dollars, right? And the first ratio they gave us was seven deniers, seven deniers on top over $10, 10 on bottom, equals, and if we read the second sentence, it says, how many deniers would he get if he exchanged $20? So again, $20, dollars, dollars on bottom, so 20 on bottom. So we'll have 10x equals seven times 20, right? So 10x equals 140, and we divide both sides by 10. These cancel out, and I get x is equal to 14. So he will get 14 deniers if he exchanges it for $20. I'd pause and try and do number 10 and 12 if I were you. Backside, it says a triangle is two inches tall and three inches wide. If it is enlarged to a width of nine inches, then how tall will it be? So what are we comparing? Again, we're comparing its height or tall and width. So we're comparing tall and wide. And our first ratio they gave us was two inches tall over three inches wide. Equals, if we keep reading, it says if its width, width is enlarged to nine inches, so wide was on the bottom, so nine should go on the bottom, and x should go on top. Sorry, I didn't mean to make that blue. All right, so we'll say three times x is three x equals two times nine is 18. Both divide both sides by three and we'll get our answer of x is equal to six d. All right, um, number 15, it says Heather enlarged a size frame to a height of 12 inches. What is the new width if it was originally three inches tall and four inches wide. So again, we're comparing tall and wide, and this time they actually give you the first complete ratio in the second sentence, right? So it says three inches tall to four inches wide. So three inches tall to four inches wide. Then if you go back to the first sentence, it says Heather enlarged the size of a frame to a height of 12 inches. So height would be how tall something is. So 12 actually goes on top this time and our x goes on bottom, because we need to figure out what would the new width be. So we're gonna go ahead and say 12 times four and three times x. So I'll just, I like to put the variable first, so I'll put three x equals, uh, 12 times four is 48, and then I'll divide both sides by three. And so I'll get uh, x is equal to uh, 16 inches, so B, All right? Uh, number 17, uh, if an eight foot tall baby giraffe kills a, casts a 12 foot long shadow, then how tall is a petrified stump that casts a six foot shadow? So again, we're doing something how tall it is and then how long the shadow is. So tall and shadow, and the first ratio they gave us was eight, something was eight feet tall and it was a 12 foot shadow. Um, then how tall is a petrified stump that cast a six foot shadow? So again, in the second one, they said six foot shadow. Six foot shadow, shadows on bottom, six should go on bottom, x should go on top. So we're doing 12 times x, which is 12 x equals eight times six, which is 48. Then we'll divide both sides by 12, and we'll get x is equal to 48 divided by 12 is 4, using your reference sheet, hopefully, if you didn't know that off the top of your head. Because you've watched the video and because you've shown all your work, you do not have to do 19 and you do not have to do 20. If you don't watch the video, you're going to be in this for a surprise. Uh, take a good look at all the work I've shown. That should be the type of work that you show on all the even problems. That's it. Call me if you have questions.